this is a very, very exciting time in our society. It's not a bad time. Any time when you're going to have change happening is a good time, especially when the change comes from the people. Because the system that has been controlling us for the last 4,000 years is about to collapse. I want each and every one of you to turn to your right and look into the mirrors because that's where the change is coming from. <laughs> to the BS and saying, I've had enough. Now, I'm here to help you on the pathway to understanding how to do that. Because we're all at different stages of awakening. Okay? The only difference between you and me is time. And I'm here to shorten that time so that I can give you as much information or point you in the direct, uh, directions of that information so you can empower yourselves. Now this goes back to ancient Egypt when the priests started taking control of the country away from the bearer. Nothing has changed in 4,000 years. In ancient Rome, the Senate who controlled the country were all the rich elite people making all the rules for the illiterate to follow. You've probably all heard of Julius Caesar, how he was this great dictator and that's why he was stabbed. That's a lie. <coughs> Julius Caesar was fighting for the people so the whole Senate stabbed him. They all put their knives into him so they were all culpable. And that process of the Senate law, Roman law, is what we have been conditioned to believe is law. But it's not. So I'm going to expose a few things. Some of you may know this. Some of you may not agree with what I say. I'm not here to convince you, and I'm not here to convert you. I'm here to provide you with alternatives that may answer your questions. Now, there's lots of different groups out there who have different ways of doing things. Some of them are compatible, some of them I don't agree with because they make some fundamental mistakes. So I'm going to try and make it as clear for you as possible so that you can walk away going, oh, I got this document in the mail today which says infringement notice, what do I do with it? Well, I'm going to explain that to you, how you do with it. So, let's start off with, who knows what this place is? It's not Australia. Who knows where Australia is? Norfolk Island. Norfolk Island. About here. Who didn't know that? No. Here's why. When the white man came into the southern hemisphere, they were not allowed to interfere with the properties. It was agreed. And there was a thing called terra nullius, which means you're only allowed to occupy a land that is unoccupied. And when they came here, guess what? It was occupied by the First Nations people. And contrary to believing that Governor Arthur came off the boat and planted the flag and do all that, that's bullshit. <laughs> Because they weren't allowed to come onto the land because the First Nations people killed them. So what did they do? They sailed up here and they found Norfolk Island. There's no one there. So they claimed Norfolk Island. And they called it Australia. And from Norfolk Island... They offered their administration of the land. Okay? Because they don't have ownership of this land. Who knows what that line means on the map? Anyone want to have a go? Border of what? Between Western Australia and the rest of the country. Why is it there? Because before this line was there, this was known as 
New Holland. Which means, who'd laid claim to it? The Dutch. The Dutch had. And then the English came along. So why is the line there? They were on one side and they were on the other. They made a deal. They made a deal to divide the land so they didn't have to go to war. But neither of them had the right to claim it. <coughs> so what do we call this land? The First Nations people have hundreds of different names for it. I refer to it as Terra Australis. Because that's what it was known as before the white man put his foot on here. So if I refer it to Terra Australis, it's not because I'm disrespectful to the First Nations people. It's because I'm disrespecting the white people who claimed it over the First Nations people. Because they have no claim over the name Terra Australis. All right. How does the, this deceit start? Where does it start? It goes back thousands of years to ancient Rome. Who's heard of something called the Unum Sanctum? Three hands in the whole room. Why, why is this, what's this Unum Sanctum and why is it so important? Well, who's heard of the Magna Carta? Oh, who thinks that's the answer to us being free? No, it's not. Why not? Because it was put to King John with a knife to his throat. So it's not a legal binding contract. And in fact, what happened, everything was controlled by the Pope and the Vatican. Everything was Catholic Church. So the Pope renounced the Magna Carta. So they failed the first time. They tried again 80 years later with a second Magna Carta. But the Pope's not silly. Catholic Church run things through higher realms, higher levels of consciousness. They operate at that level. And the Unum Sanctum, the Pope said this, the papal bull, every single soul on the planet is claimed by the Catholic Church. Every single soul on the planet. How many of you have rebutted the Unum Sanctum? I will. Four, five. Guess what? The rest of you are all owned by the Catholic Church. Your souls are owned. Do you know why? He who does not deny admits. If you don't deny it, if you don't rebut it, you've consented to it. Look it up. Have a read of it. The most evil document in the whole of history. How dare someone claim your soul? Does that remind you of something that the Catholic Church actually does represent? <laughs> <laughs> and as most of us are finding out, the Catholic Church actually is the Church of Satanism. Yes, they are. <laughs> and it's all evident in the writings. It points out the reason why each and every one of you must separate yourself from this crisis. Yeah. Yeah. Once you've done that, you can set up an alternate system. Now, there's a group up in Queensland who've set up an alternate community council. So they don't pay rates and they don't pay parking fines because when they get something from that council, they say, thank you very much, but I do all my business with this council. You can set up an alternate council in your area. You can set up an alternate state government. This is where the First Nations people are so important because they're the rightful owners to the land. What's happening at the moment, I'll tell you where the big fraud comes in. Everyone heard about native title? Yeah. 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 Good thing, bad thing. Bad. Anything that comes from the, count, from the government's got to be a bad thing. But why is it bad? Because they don't have the right. Well, they do. But this is how they do it. Sir Ian Botham has a title. How does he get the title? Because the Queen gives it to him, which means Ian Botham, by getting a title, has agreed to be subservient to the Queen. Native title is a title that's being offered to the First Nations people for them to be subservient to the government. It's a trick. It's a fraud. You've got to understand the way that 
government goes about you. If they're offering something, they're lying through their teeth. There's something else going on behind it. Okay, so what are we going to do about this? Guess what the first thing you have to do, folks? Rebut the urban sanctum. How do you do that? Law versus legislation. Who knows the difference? Anyone have a go at what the difference is? Land, air, water, legislation is um, for corporations. Land, air, water, we're going to get back to that. Because we're going to have a big talk about land, air, water and legislation. Because I put law up there the wrong way for a reason. Because we think law and legislation are different. But law is the same as legislation. It's a different branch. This actually should be L O R E. So, how are we going to get out of this system? And then, how are we going to fight the system? The most important document in their system is a little thing called the affidavit. Okay, who's heard of an affidavit? You've all heard about what it is. But what does it mean? An affidavit is a statement that you make, which is a contract with the other party that says anything that's not agreed to is what we need to decide on. Okay? It's the most powerful document in their system. In our system, the living man and woman system, guess what the most powerful thing is? Our word. Our word is our deed. We exist in the real word of the spoken word and the spoken deed. Their system exists 100% in what realm? The written world. The paper realm. Who has done an affidavit and served it on their system? One, two, three, four, five, six. Guess what? The rest of you don't exist in the system. Don't exist at all. So if you go up into a court and you stand up and say, I'm the living man, I'm the living woman. Really? Good luck to you, you don't exist. Until you put an affidavit in their system, you do not exist. Well, how does this come about? When you're in the womb, your placenta and your fetus is the same DNA. Okay? It's the combination from when the egg was fertilised by your mother and your father, it comes its way down and it embeds. It's a new entity. And that DNA is consistent through the placenta through to the fetus. And at that time, the fetus is the beneficiary through the placenta. Everything it gets, it derives from the placenta. It's the beneficiary. Okay, it's pretty simple, isn't it? Because remember that word beneficiary because it comes into play. Now, when you're born, ladies, you'll probably remember this more than the men, because we're probably flat out on the floor fainted. <laughs> <laughs> the moment that your baby is born, you name it. Generally, you name it. This is John Michael. You don't say, this is John Michael Smith. You don't go to the... Because a surname is not legal. Surname, S-U-R... N-A-M-E. Sue comes from the French. Omba. It's a name that's put on by somebody. So when the baby's born, the mother names it John Michael. Then what happens? The baby's been born. We put up the umbilical cord. That's called severance. When you sever one property into two, you automatically create a trust. Okay? They know this. No one tells you this. The minute that the cord is cut, that's the act of severance. The two properties are now separated and a trust is automatically created. What happens to the placenta in most of the cases? Thrown away? What do they do before it's supposedly thrown away? Anyone remember? 
They weigh it. Why do they weigh it? For the value of it and to give it standing in the physical world. It's because it's a living entity. It's part of the property. Okay? So they, the property, they've weighed its value. Does the mother keep the percent? No. It's abandoned. Under maritime law, what happens to abandoned property? It gets salvaged. Guess who salvages it? The government does. And they name it. And they don't name it John Michael. They name it John Michael Smith. <coughs> and they don't do it once. They do it three times. They create three trusts. One, for when it's on the land, L. Two, for the air. And three, for the water. Maritime Admiralty Trust. Three trusts are created. Now we've got somebody talking on Thursday night on Zoom, who's all over that side of it. So if you're really interested in finding out more about that, I'll give you the details for Thursday night Zoom, 7.30. All it will be recorded and you can watch it. This guy in New Zealand, who I introduced to this stuff two years ago, he went and he did all the paperwork involved in camera covers. Right, so we've got a situation. Three trusts have been created. How many times have you seen an invoice? John, Michael, lowercase, capital letter Smith. And then there's another one, capital John, Michael Smith. And there's another one, Smith, comma, John, Michael. There's three different versions they use, or they use a misto in all of this. They all come under one of these three trusts. None of them are you. They're the placenta. Is that right? That's the placenta. <laughs> they create bonds and trust accounts for the placenta because it's the same DNA. And guess who they make the beneficiary of those trust accounts? No. Who's the beneficiary of the placenta? The baby. The baby. They can't make anyone else the beneficiary except for the baby. So that you, the living man or woman, they name you as the beneficiary. But then, they control you through getting you to submitting to being the beneficiary. How do they do that? When they register you at school, they add the surname. The birth certificate. Okay, the birth certificate is a record of the trust account process. But the first time they convince you and your parents when you're growing up that you are that is when they enroll you in kindergarten or school. Then as you get older, oh, you've got to set up a bank account. Guess whose side the bank's on? Man, on your side, they set up a public account. Now, we all think public, well, that's all us. That's the good side, isn't it? No. We've been convinced that well, public schools and private schools is the bad guys, right? <coughs> no. Private is the people who know. <laughs> that's why they're private. That's why they set up private trusts. Because anything you put into a private trust takes it out of the public realm and puts it into the private which means it can't be controlled by the banks. It can't be controlled by the government. Who travels on public roads? <laughs> They've claimed ownership of the roads. Now, what are those white lines that go down the middle of the road? What does that divide the road into? Mains. 
Where do we find lanes? Swimming pools. Swimming pools in water, in shipping. It's, it's, they've turned the road into Admiralty Water. That's why they have traffic islands in the middle of it. And they call it a sealed road. It means that they've sealed it, made ownership of it. So what they've done is they've taken their maritime jurisdiction and infiltrated it. The Holy Sea. Through all, the Holy Sea, through all the roads. Maritime law. Who's if it's on the land? This is where it's important for us to understand the importance of the First Nations people. The First Nations people are now being acknowledged as the traditional owners of the land. Has anyone come forward with a bill of sale selling the land of Terra Australis to any of these trust accounts? No. No. So they're acting unlawfully until such time as we call them our own. Where's your authority from the First Nations people to operate your business on this land? See, they're offering, they're offering their administration. They're offering. But you don't have to accept it. You can say, no, thank you very much. I don't acknowledge your administration on the land owned by this First Nations group. It's that simple. So we create our affidavit. And if you want a copy of an affidavit, I've seen lots of affidavits, and then I created one to help a group up in Queensland, and since then it's been developed into something which I can only describe as kick-ass. And we have one that Yes, and you can get it at the People's Court of Terra Australis.org. You go to that website, and on the front page it says affidavit. You click on it, there it is, it's a template, you fill it out, bang. The court, what is it? The People's Court of Terra Australis. This affidavit copyrights your name, copyrights the fictitious name, it copyrights your DNA, it copyrights your image, meaning they can't take photos of you, they can't surveil you by cameras, it copyrights your voice so that when Centrelink or whatever says, Use your voice so that we can do such and such. No, that's a breach of my copyright. So when you get an infringement notice from the police because you were speeding, I'm sorry, you've breached my copyright. Here's the name that I own. We have bills. How many people own their own house? No. Okay. Guess what? None of you do. None of you do. And here's how they do it. The, all that whole process does is transfer the bill of title of the location. Who's got a, a mortgage? The first thing it says, lot 25 of such and such, then it gives the address. What lot means, location of title. Geographic coordinates on a map, because what does their realm exist on? Paper. Where's the state of Victoria? The fictional construct. Exactly. What? It's a fictional, fictitious construct. It exists on paper. It's not the land. When all these people were not wanting to cross the border between Queensland and New South Wales, where do you find a border? No, it's just no. on a piece of paper. On a piece of paper. A piece of paper has a border. Or in your mind. What we have are boundaries. A boundary is a shoreline. A boundary is a river. It's not a border. A border is a fictitious construct. So here's how it works. Whatever you want to call the universal creator. You want to call it God, you want to call it Ali, you want to call it Christian. Yeshua. Yeshua. Want to call it Bob? That's what it said to me once. Call me Bob. <laughs> Long story. Creates you, the soul. But think of the soul like this, because this is how it was described to me. You are a drop of water in an ocean called God. The only time you believe you're separate from it is when you 
take yourself out of it. But you and your Creator are actually one. So you're only answerable to that. But then you incarnate into a living form. This is your kingdom. You're a visitor on this planet. You have galactic immunity, diplomatic immunity. And you incarnate into a living form. Guess where your kingdom is? How many of you know the word sovereign? No, no, not sovereign. Sovereign. S U V, comma E R A N. Sovereign. It's like sovereign on steroids. It's that much higher. The hardest thing that each and every one of you is going to have to overcome is your belief structure in the antiquated legal system. And to get into your head, I'm a soul, I'm only answerable to my creator, and I exist in this kingdom as its sovereign, as its sovereign being. Because under that, sovereign beings got together and they created governments. To govern the masses. And the governments created legislation. And every single legislation down here refers to the person. Even when I can't spell it, it's the same. The person. If you read a piece of anything, that refers to the person, that's the fictitious entity that they are creating to control you. So you create an affidavit that says, hey, guess what? I'm not a person. It's a persona, it's a mask. All you have to do is rebut it. If you haven't rebutted it, guess what? That's what you are. If you haven't done an affidavit and served it on these people in various departments and all those bits and pieces, you don't exist in their system other than a person. And a person has to do what they're told. So you just have to challenge them by creating this affidavit. Once you have it in the system, it becomes your rock of Gibraltar. Because... 28 days later, if they have not challenged it with actual physical proof, which they can't do, it becomes the contract and the law between you and that party. Okay? It becomes the law between you and that party. You've negotiated a contract which basically says, don't F with me or you're in trouble. Because attached as part of that affidavit is a schedule of fees for remedy. We're arresting you might be $2,000. Putting you in a divvy van might be $5,000. Filing an infringement notice against you may be $5,000. So they send you an infringement notice in the mail. Guess what you send them back? An invoice for $5,000. See, we're not trying to destroy their system. We're flipping their system on them. Because guess what? They're bound to it and we're not. I've been so busy helping people, I have got six commercial liens against policemen worth over $25 billion each because of the interest that's accumulating. I have invoices against five county court judges, innumerable magistrates, registrars, all of these people. And I will be following up on them next year. But this works, because I have other associates who've actually followed through on the commercial links, and they've bankrupted policemen, taken the houses, taken all the bits pieces, because it's their system. It's their system. We're not trying to fight their system. I don't want to destroy the legal system. Why would I want to fight it when it's a beautiful way of holding them accountable? <laughs> There's not a war here to think, well, it's like, 
in its place. <coughs> Nothing that they do is illegal. The creation of these trust accounts, all of that, none of it's illegal. Unlawful. Unlawful it is. And when they try to make you the persona, if you don't challenge it, they're still acting lawfully. Because he who does not deny admits. So they try this with you. When they pull you over and say, oh, can you show you some driver's license? How many blind people just basically given a driver's license? You just consented. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So what are you supposed to say? Quite simply. What's the emergency and how can I help you? They said, what? I said, well, you've got all these lights flashing. You're only supposed to use those when there's an emergency. So what's the emergency and how can I help you? Oh, there is no emergency. Oh, so... You've done that to deceive me, to pull me over, so you've acted in dishonour. Straight away. Well, have I committed a crime? No. Have I disturbed the peace? No. Give it your eyes. Well, hang on a minute. If I haven't committed a crime and I haven't disturbed the peace, then I'm free to go. Oh, no, you, you have to show us your licence. Okay, so now you're unlawfully detaining me. Now you're on my schedule of fees that I served on the commissioner. That's $500 a minute. What do you want to talk about? (laughs) (laughs) That's what I do. I film myself. I'm doing it. I'm up on YouTube if you want to watch it. They tried to take my car. They tried to repay my car. I said, no, thank you. But you have to surrender your car. Surrender. Interesting word. So you're declaring war on me. (laughs) That's exactly what it means. Ask me to surrender. When courts pass an order, it's military. That's why they call you Mr. or Mrs. because that's the lowest military rank. So you rebuff all of that. Say, thank you, no thank you, you're on my time now. So the interesting when the police pull me over and try to do something is the next day they usually get an invoice for around about $60,000, $70,000. <laughs> And they try to pop it off thinking that the magistrate will just do it through. Well, no, then the magistrate gets one, and we go to the county court, and then we have fun with the judges. This is a process where we're going to overwhelm their system and expose the fraud. Okay? Now, I do this with people with bank mortgages, where they pay 95% of their mortgage off, they find out what's been going on, and say, right. We're going to ask for every single cent you've put back into that because the contract was fraudulent and they knew it. The tax systems on the fraud. Jules here had a situation where she got sacked for not having the, the vaccine. She's now in a position where we're waiting on a ruling from the Fair Work Commission where she could potentially get 7.25 million. <laughs> we put into their system. We didn't say, oh, you guys are wrong. We set them up for something bigger. We set them up for breach of the work safety. We set them up for breach of workplace violence. We set them up for fraud in the contract. And they fell in hook, line and set. We're streets of heaven. We want to educate you guys how simple it is to do this. We've got templates to help you to do it. We've got people to help you to do it. Every Thursday night we sit there with anyone from across Australia or around the world who comes and asks a question and we say, okay, here's how you deal with that. And there's not just one way of dealing with it. The first thing you can do is you can send a letter to the court saying, I don't acknowledge your administration. Now, under contract law, Both parties have to agree to who's going to adjudicate if there's a disagreement. And if one party disagrees, they can't hear it. So the simple thing is you say, don't acknowledge your organisation. Who's heard of the Magistrates' Court? Okay, what's the Magistrates' Court in lowercase? Magistrates' Court in lowercase is the name given to the space created by the Magistrates' Court Act. It's the room, the Magistrates' Court. And guess who that's for? All the people. If you have a disagreement of contract, you take it there. 
But guess what? 99.99999% of people never knew, and I'm going to say I was the one who brought it forward. The capital letter magistrates call is a private corporation, which offers administration of that space. All you have to say is, sorry, don't agree with your administration. I want the matter heard before a jury of 12 of my peers. But it's a speeding fight. Well, there's no, there's no uh, victim, is there? All of the mistakes in their thinking. How much authority does the Victoria Police have? Zero. Zero. Do you know why? <coughs> They're all impersonating uh, public officials. Not completely. The security guards. Not completely. Here's the first part of it. In the Victoria Police Act, lowercase letters, at 51A, it tells what the duties and responsibilities of a constable is. And a constable has the authority to arrest someone if they've committed a crime or to keep the peace. That's it. That's the only authority they have. Then under 51B, it says other orders imposed on them by other instruments. Imposed means against your will. This is where they become the officer of the invading force. They wear two hats and they don't even know they're doing it. The Victoria Police capital lettered entity has no authority in any legislation anywhere. So you point out and say, where's your authority coming from? Over me, the living man. Because I sent an affidavit to your Chief Commissioner three months ago, which they didn't challenge, which now stands as the contract between us. Oh, your Chief Commissioner didn't tell you that? Too bad for you, mate, because you're up for all the funds that you've just created. False arrest, armed kidnap. So because once they're acting outside of the role of a constable, they're just an armed thug. Which means everything they do is aggravated, because they've got a weapon. All we need to do is to put it in paper and put it before them. So, let's get into this. The first thing each and every one of you should do is what? Affidavit. Yes. Affidavit. And we've got the template there for you. It takes about an hour to do it. And you never have to do it again in the life. And it's got all these annexures to fill in. It's like gold. Now, the other thing you need to develop... Who's, who's seen uh, the Union Jack before? Yes. Yes. How many of you stand under the red duster? Mm -hmm. The red flag? Red ensign. Red ensign. It's probably more so than the blue one. Yeah? yeah? What's in the top left hand corner of the red ensign? Yeah. What's in the middle of the Union Jack? Oh, Do you know what that red cross means? Oh, yes. oh. The Crown Corporation. Who is owned by? The Vatican. So if you stand under the red feather duster, you're standing under the Vatican. Oh, but this is the flag that our ancestors, you know, our, the Antics fought under. Yeah, because they were lied to. They didn't know that they were actually doing a population game for the Vatican. So what do we do? What flag do we stand under? No, that's it, your own. Because you're the king or queen of your kingdom. So you stand under your own flag. How do you do that? You get onto some secret program and you design one. It takes about five minutes. What can you do? I'll tell you what. Get a copy of the Eureka flag, because it's very symbolic about standing up to authority that's crooked. Get a family crest of your family. Stick it in the middle. I have across the top of mine, in Latin, Ruat. What have I got? I can't even remember what I have now. <laughs> uh, 
brought justia fia celum, which means justice is in heaven. And why do I have it in Latin across my flag? Because I'm doing this to their system. Okay? But you can put whatever you want on your flag. You can create whatever you want on your flag. It's your kingdom. Why is that important? Who's received a document from the government or something? What's it got in the top left hand corner? Coat of arms, logo, trademark. Because we read left to right, top to bottom. Which means everything comes under what's in the top left hand corner. So if you can see the document that's got a coat of arms or something in there, they're trying to tell you, you come under that. Every single document I send to any one of them in the top left hand corner has my flag saying, you're under my jurisdiction. And in the top right hand corner, I have my court. Yes, people, I have my own court. Why? Because I can. <laughs> and so can each of you. And because it's a court of the living, it has higher jurisdiction than any of their courts, including the High Court. And I have served into their court judgment decisions from my court, properly made, said the matter has been dismissed. <laughs> the judge looked at this. What's this? I've never seen this court before. I said, well, it's a court of the living man, has higher jurisdiction than this court, and it's the ruling's been passed. He said, oh, I don't recognise this court. I said, thank you very much. Under the laws of equity, I don't have to recognise yours. <laughs> the power of your paperwork. All right? Create your own flag. Get it happening. All right. What else? There's some things I want to draw your attention to. Okay. What does that say? Really? How did you get that from that? That's not English. Elephant. No, that's not English. That's called dog Latin. <laughs> it looks like English and could be read as English, but it is not English. Dog Latin is criminal and counterfeit. So when you get a document that says infringement notice in capital letters, the document is criminal and counterfeit. <coughs> so the first thing you do when you get any of these documents is to go, oh dear. Dog Latin equals criminal and counterfeit. What you're telling them is your document's criminal. Because you're using this. And you write at the very top of it, I do not understand. <laughs> Who knows what that means? I do not understand. <laughs> I do not stand under. So you write, I do not understand this document. I don't stand under it. Why not? Because you've got all this criminal and counterfeit language on it. Also on the document, you probably find, there's a whole series of boxes. Boxes, varying sizes and whatever, with stuff written inside it. Right, all this stuff written inside it. It's what? Coffin. It's called the Four Corners Rule. What the Four Corners Rule means is anything inside the Four Corners <coughs> is not part of the document. What? You don't have to take any notice of anything that's in a box. It's not part of the document. It's lifted off. Look it up, it's called the Four Corners Rule. So this infringement notice has suddenly got very little on it that's actually <laughs> relevant. Now the other thing you're going to find is what what's that language? Italics? Italics? Yeah. Italics. Italics is cursive. Whenever they use it, what are they doing to you? They're cursing you. So you put a circle around that and you go, oh no, 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 I don't appreciate being 
Curtis, thank you very much. No, thank you. And we start to deal with their documents, and then we send them back to them with a notice of conditional acceptance. We're not denying it. Notice of conditional acceptance, saying, if you can send me something that's in English, and English only, I'll consider it. Simple English. Okay? So you're negating their documents straight away. But you don't dispute them. Because get, guess what happens when you dispute a document? Contract. Contract. You've agreed, the copy, you've agreed what's in there is legitimate. You've agreed that you understand dog Latin and you've consented to it. You agree that anything that's inside the boxes is part of the document. You've consented to it. How many of you have been said, if you're not happy with this, you can challenge it in court? <laughs> how, many, how many people challenge something in court? You never challenge it in court. Ever. Because the person who files the claim has to prove their case. How are you going to prove you didn't do it? We can't prove what didn't happen. This is why they do what they do. And they will send you, and the case will have accused versus informant. Anyone seen that on documents? Accused versus informant? It's either a mistake or it's a deliberate fraud. Because the first named person is the person who's brought the matter to court. Well, I'm sorry, the registrar must have made a mistake because he put the accused first. And the accused didn't bring the matter to court. So that needs to be amended. And if it's not amended, then the registrar has acted fraudulently. You put it all in writing. The magistrate's court no longer can hear any matters against me. Because I got them to admit that they act fraudulently. Quite okay. simply, notice of agreed facts. The court did fraud in this, the court did that. They have 28 days to challenge it. If they don't challenge a notice of agreed facts in 28 days, guess what happens? They have agreed to the facts. They have agreed that they act fraudulently and that they have no power to act anymore. The power of your paperwork is so important. And we've got it for you. We've got templates. And you can learn this process quite simply by getting a hold of a template and reading it and going, oh, okay. And if you're not sure of something, we'll explain it to you. So let's get into your house or car. What do you want to hear? Right. House. 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 Let's start with the big money. <laughs> All right. So we know that the fraud that they've created is they created a fraudulent mortgage. We know that they sold the geographic locations of that on a map to your fiction name. So how do we start addressing that? The first thing you do, what, what happens if you normally sell property to someone? What do you need? Okay. Well, that's, 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 that's pretty complicated. Contract of some sort. How about this? A bill of sale. A bill of sale. Simple bill of sale. I, John Smith, in the belief that I am the beneficiary of the trust account, John Capital Letter Smith, do sell the property and all titles associated with it to the living man, John Smith, for one silver dollar. <laughs> <laughs> because silver's the only currency. Yeah, that's right. They can't negate that you have sold it. You have a right, as the beneficiary of that trust account, to sell the property. And you sold it to your living man self for one dollar. Bill of sale. Totally legal in their system and binding. And then what you do is you say, okay, now I'm going to send a transfer of title document. And I'm going to send it to the land office to tell them the property has changed hands from the fiction that's in your system to the living man that's in the private. So please transfer the documents. We send notices of direction and instruction for any bill that's in the capital lettered name 
We send it to the Registrar-General in this state, because he's the trustee of that account, with instructions for him to pay the bill. And it is his responsibility as the trustee to pay that, because if he doesn't, he commits misfeasance in public office. Simple little ways. Yeah. I had fun once I went into um, I got picked up for unregistered driving. Funny about that. <laughs> Walk in there and the uh, copper introduced himself to the magistrate. The magistrate asked me who I was and I said, Oh, it's not for me to say who I am. He's the one making the claim. He has to prove who I am. He said, Oh, yeah, that's very good. As, What's your name? I said, oh, Sorry, did I not explain that? He's the one making the claim. He has to prove who I am. So mad, he's almost bursting. <laughs> for the last time, are you Mr. And I said, I will tell you this, Your Honour. I am not the accused as written. Think about it. I am not the accused as written. Clever pro uh, prosecutor, they're not bright, these guys, stands up and says, Your Honour, since he's not the accused, I move we go ex parte. And I said, Yes, yes, well, that, uh, yes, we'll go ex parte. I went, oh, thank you very much. Have a nice day. Someone said, What happened just then? I said, they just admitted that I'm not the accused. Yeah. <laughs> so anything that they do can't be held against me. They can only take it against the fictionate. Oh. Wow. You know how to play the game. Oh my God. Simple. It's simple. It's you've got to stay calm. You've got to know your stuff. And stay calm. You walk into the magistrate's court and he starts carrying on. I say, excuse me, are you presuming to act as an executive to song tour against my trust account without my opinion, without my approval? You want to see them, don't you? Yeah. Because you've called them out, because they're acting as an executor to sign. That's an executor for the dead without your permission for your trust account. Because you're the beneficiary. Because you're the beneficiary. Once you understand your position, and you can do this before you even go in there, you can send the paperwork in beforehand. And it's beautiful when they say, well, and who are you? you say, well, have you got a copy of my notice of attendance? Notice how they ask for a notice of appearance? Only ghosts appear. <laughs> That's why they say all stand, because they're raising the dead. Oh, ah. Okay? They're raising the dead. Down you go back into the coffee. I actually, I actually stand back from the, the bench, and I stand there, and they call the matter, and I'm standing there, and they say, oh, you know, such and such. I said, oh, permission to come aboard? <laughs> Because it's a maritime jurisdiction. If I step forward to the bench and I step on board his ship, he's the captain of that ship, what have I just committed? Stowaway. I'm a stowaway. So I have no respect. I mean dishonour. So I stand back. Permission to come aboard. And I wait until he says permission granted. And I step forward. All these little tricks, simple things to do. To do it. All right, so you know how to get your house out of the public system into the private. Simple two documents. Doesn't matter what the house is worth. You're the beneficiary, and you sold it for one silver dollar. Who says the council has the right to validate what rates are worth? They don't. They've actually admitted they don't, and then they go and do it. It's crazy. Same thing with your car. You need to do two things. Bill of sale. You send a copy to Vic Rose and you tell them the car has been sold out of the public realm. It's no longer a vehicle. It's now being used as private property. It's owned by the living man. I've got beautiful correspondence with Vic Rose where they said we can only sell a we can only register a vehicle to a corporation or an individual, and you do not qualify as either. Because an individual is a single person. A natural person is not a living man. Get that? A natural person is not a living man. A natural person is someone who acts for the living man. It's a separation. So, you sell your car, to that, and you record it with a group like the People's Court 
of Terra Australis. They have a record of who the owner is. Now you're travelling on land. Because as a driver, who knows what a driver is? For an occupation. It's an occupation. It's somebody who's employed by someone for the purposes of transferring goods or fares. That's what a driver is. It's, not, it's what they call a misnomer. It's a legal term to confuse you. How many of you have children? I oh, know you don't. <laughs> children? Child? Misnomer. They are all your biological creations and you are the owners of them until they turn 21. Stop using the word child. Anyone got a copy of their birth certificate and looked at what it says in the top box? Child. And then the name. You can be 165 years old and on your birth certificate you're still a child. Which means you have no rights. How many of your parents? You're not learning, are you? Pair rent. rent. Two people renting a child from the state. You are a biological creator. All of these words that they've brought into common language to keep people confused. Yes, that's why they got rid of father and mother. That's also why they're trying to get rid of male and female genders. Because the minute you don't have a gender, you become a fiction. They've tricked all of these, I call them the alphabet community, sorry if I'm offending anybody, but I can't remember. They keep adding letters here and there and there. That's why they've convinced all of these people to become transgender. So that they can own them. Okay. Find me a question. <coughs> if you issue your uh, affidavit and then uh, choose to step aside and be the living being, and you step in and out, use the system when you want, and be the human individual if you want? Well, of course I can, because the trust account is a trust account. I don't own it. I'm the beneficiary. So I might as well benefit from having it there. <laughs> But once I own the name, not only can I use it, but I can also make them pay when they do use it. Because it's my copyright property. It's worth it. What's it? Have you had issues with tax if you want to do like one licensed to uh, license by the authority? You have to go into it for the long run. Okay? Because the police are going to pull you over and they're going to play the game because they don't know. So you have to issue the invoices against them. You have to take the matter to the court. You have to take it to the magistrate's court. You have to make, take it up to the next court. You have to be prepared to do that unless you want the problem solved quickly. If you want the problem solved quickly, you just do a notice of direction and instruction and you pay it out of your trust account. Now, here's the great thing about this trust account. At any time, if you're not happy with the magistrate, you can say, I'm displeased with your uh, adjudication with your proceedings, I instruct you that the trust is now broken. You are to dissolve the trust and forward the funds onto the beneficiary. There's, there's a lot of money in these trust accounts. There's a site called, uh, I think it's destiny. Or oh, I can't remember exactly. I seen dot com. What is it? Icin.com. No, that's another one. There's, there's a number of you can get into. You can take the numbers off your birth certificate, punch them in here, and it brings up all the bonds that they have created from your name. Yeah. <laughs> or there's like 30, 40, that's just part of it. All the bonds they have created under that name and the value of them. There were 300, 400,000, etc. And there's a whole list of them. Bet you didn't know they were doing that. But why would that be that? Knowing that there are people out there that will know. Why do they have a stock market? Because they're trading it. They're trading it. They're trading it. So why do you be owned by a king now? I didn't know it. Who knows who you're owned by? So I've, I've, I've seen several talks like this on the internet and, 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 and uh, a person like yourself giving it the time. And this is great, but we're not going to remember all of this, so obviously we're going to study. But we are playing against their system, so 
I want to know how many of these uh, affidavits and case things you've actually won because they're going to come back and say, you haven't got a call, we send them a fine, you know, we send the police around who are there paying for thugs. So how do you, like, have you won even on a small scale? Yeah, I, I had uh, another driving unregistered <laughs> one and uh, they never charged me for anything. Because but you went to the magistrate's court yeah. and then they threw it out because they couldn't argue with it. And I'm not the only one that, that's had wins. Okay? But what I tend to do is I don't want to have a win. I want to take it through the whole system and expose all the courts to everybody. And that's what I do. I've had um, county court judges agree that if there's a conflict between the laws of God and the laws of their court, he puts the laws of their court first because he's paid by them. And yet they ask you to swear on the Bible. By the way, when you swear on the Bible, you blaspheme, which negates the Bible, which only leaves their rules. So that's why you do affirmation. At the back. Just to go quickly, you started off saying this has been going on for thousands of years, but you're talking about the English language. Is this just a new construct, or is this, uh, you know, how can it be going on for 4,000 years? It's been going on through all the different civilizations. It gets transferred because the Vatican controls all of these different countries. If the Vatican works in Latin, then we're still talking in English. Where's English derived from? German, French. Which are all derived from? Latin. All derivations of the core language. Just one thing with the uh, the registration. What do you do as far as, uh, as part of your registration, or most of your registration, is your TAC insurance. So if you cause injury or harm to someone or someone's property, that, that covers that you know, now. People ask me this all the time. Yeah. It's all covered under common law anyway. If you do harm to somebody, you're accountable. Yeah. But where does all the money go to TAC? To the lawyers. That's why they set it up. To screw people and give more money to lawyers. But everything that involves injuring somebody else or stealing or any of that is covered under the laws of the land that we have anyway. Now, this is what they did. They, we used to have common law courts back in the 1990s, 20s, whatever. Their administration came in and said, we'll offer administration of this. They duplicated the Crimes Act. The Crimes Act is a duplication of common law crimes and they offered to administrate it, and then they added all of this other legislation to screw you into the ground. Does that answer that question? Well, we don't have any common law, recognised common law courts, and if yes, you injure someone or kill someone, um, there's going to be retribution. We do have common law courts. I think it's a no-fault system. I think it finds a no-fault system. Mm -hmm. okay. yeah, so even if you're driving unregistered... If you no go fault. to the Supreme Court, there's a common law department. Do you know how many common law courts I can see at the moment? Every single one of us. Every single one of you is a common law court. It's not the space. The common law court is you saying, I've been wronged, I need my peers to hear my grievance. That's a common law court. Okay? All of the court spaces are set up under legislation for the people but they're being administrated by a corporation to screw you. Anyone can book the magistrate's court for a hearing. Anyone has a right to do that. I filed private criminal charges against magistrates and police for their actions. And the chief magistrate's trying to block them. Because he's corrupt. He's trying to protect his colleagues. I'm, so, I'm sorry, you're in an administrative position, not a judgmental position. The matter has to be heard. So we're to start my <coughs> You mentioned in regards to a court in Queensland. Would that court be the new one that's been set up by Indigenous GUN? No, that's the one in the far north. Okay. The Djidjinji, excuse me if I get the name wrong. Okay. Um, who have set up the I Nation, and I hope everybody gets it that that's how you get rid of this corrupt organisation. You just set up a proper. Well, we were one in Frankston, we set up three weeks ago. Yeah. Frankston, um, Frankston People's Council. Yep. And the first thing to do is get the First Nations people on board as part of it. And then you say to the local council, excuse me, have you had a copy of a bill of sale that gives you authority to operate on this land? Because we have. Yeah. 
So you've got no authority to be charging people or doing anything. You need to come to us for permission to operate on the land. Beautiful. If you need any help, just give it us. Yeah. Um, I'm dealing with issues with um, uh, Fines Victoria, but they're in my company. My company. How, how differently do I tackle it? Okay. The first thing you do to Fines Victoria, you say, can you prove to me who you are? Because Fines Victoria was actually registered by a mate down in Willow Grove called Wayne. He went into ADSEC and he found out that Fines Victoria wasn't registered anywhere. So he registered Fines Victoria. So we were sending letters to Fines Victoria. So can you please um, prove who you are? Because you're taking all of his money that belongs to him. At ASIC. At ASIC. Now at the same time, some of you may have heard of a group called Pekamaru. Yeah. So there's a thing going around saying they own all these companies and they're this evil organisation. No. There were four of us at a meeting and I was telling them about what Wayne had done in registering Vines Victoria and they said, oh, what a great idea. I wonder if they've registered all these other names. And they jumped on board and they found that all of these names, the Liberal Party, the Labor Party, Office of the PM, weren't registered. So they registered all of these names to screw up the system. So those of you who may know um, Brian Tucker up in New South Wales, Stephanie Charlton, Zev Freelander, they're behind all this. Now Zev, they came, they realised the mistake. So they went to Zev and said, oh, you have to give us the names back. And Zev went, uh, no, contract is a contract. I have a contract. If you want them back, I'm willing to sell them back to you for $10 million each. <laughs> Plus $150,000. Some exorbitant figure. He said, no, I'm happy to sell them back to you if they're that important to you. No. So technically none of them can operate. Absolutely. They're all acting fraudulently. So you ask them for proof of who they are. So people who they also um, have registered as Queen of Australia. Queen of Australia, yeah. But then that was taken off ASIC. Um, I was no, ASIC are acting criminally and fraudly by breaking contracts. That's what they're doing. ASIC are actually breaking the law trying to get control of these names back. Because the governments haven't thought to register. It's it's hilarious. It's going to be a big bump but you know what? I don't care who the Queen of Australia is, because where's Australia? No, 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 and who they swear allegiance to. They swear two oaths. The first one is to the Victorian community. What's the Victorian community? The community that lived in the Victorian era? There's no de definition of what the Victorian community is. And the other one they serve, serve an oath to is our sovereign lady. Who's our sovereign lady? <laughs> Queen Elizabeth II has never used our sovereign lady as one of her titles. So who are they swearing us to? Fictions. Fictions. I've actually heard a development today. I found out that ASIC by the government has frozen my business account on the account of me not having paid for my company for registration. And I've been told that they're going to keep that money until they take them what they want and then we need to contact them to get the remainder back myself. Okay, this is one of the problems of operating in their system. They can do things like that. But you don't need to register a business to operate as a business. Did you know that? That's it will tell you. Oh, if you want to operate in your own name, you don't have to register a name. Do you know what they're really saying? We can't control you if you run a business in your own name. That's what it really means. Run a business in your own name, so it's nothing to do with the government. You don't have to pay tax, you don't have to pay anything. They're asking $1,000 that the register your uh, yeah, name, business name, $1,000. No, it's something like $31. Yes. No, they're asking, they're really mean. You have to register your business name for $1,000. Yeah. 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 You don't have to register it. Yeah. 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 I want to get back to Dick's question about Pines Victoria and the, the company. Yeah. If you get a, something, an invoice from saying you run a company and your car's been <coughs> pulled for speeding, you as a director of the company 
write a letter to Fines Victoria saying, according to our records, the property was in the hands of this living man. I don't know, not, I don't know who I was driving at the time. All that I know is there was no trade or commerce going on. So you fulfilled your requirements as a director of the company by notifying them that the property was in the charge of a living man. Finds Victoria can't do anything because they can't contract with a living man. No, but the situation I have is that they say oh, I haven't notified them, notified the driver or the living man in that time period there, so they're coming after me. Well, but you as the director say, I wasn't there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know who was driving. All I know is it was in the possession of this living man. So you fulfilled your requirements as director of the company. No, no, but they're saying I didn't reply, reply in the statutory period and hence I'm liable. Do you I didn't notify them. Oh, okay, yeah. I didn't yeah. nominate a driver in the statutory period. So hence pay up, you know. Well, they give you another period because mine went from 3600 to 3800 yeah. for another 28 days with that form on the back. Then say, I'm happy to comply if you can prove me, prove to me that you are a le legal entity, legal lawful entity, and that you have authority over my company. Throw it, always throw it back on them. And they make all these claims. I had a woman who, she was breeding dogs and they were chasing her because the dog wasn't registered. I said, ask them to prove that the dog's alive. <laughs> Ask them to prove the age of the dog, because they said uh, over the age of three months. Well, how old is it? Ask to prove every single element. I say, yeah, I'll, I'll consider it once you provide this. If you cannot provide the documents within 28 days, it will be taken that the documents do not exist and you have no claim. And that any further correspondence will be seen as attempts at extortion or fraud. You always throw it back on them with a consequence. Yeah? Land tax. You don't pay it. Ta tax is optional. You say thank you for your offer. No thank you. Simple. What authority? Provide me proof that you have authority over the land of Terra Australis and that you have authority from the First Nations people on that land that you're claiming I need to pay tax on. Throw it all back at it. Hang on. So just uh, going back to the car situation. Never. Going back to the car situation. Not following through with the registration and so forth, right? How do you then deal with insurance? Well, it's up to you. You can still find somebody who will insure it for you. Okay. Insurance companies will take your money. Okay. If you want to insure two flies walking up a wall, they'll take your money. That's yeah. true. Yeah. true. Yeah. Don't, don't worry, you won't have problems with that. If they say oh, it's not insured, but it's, it's not registered. Mm -hmm. They go, but it's, oh, it doesn't have to be registered. Mm -hmm. They'll still take your money. Awesome. Yeah, there's someone How do I go to Greece as a living man? How do you make a Yeah. We're working on that side of it. Once you've got this affidavit done, you advance, you send a copy to the airport first, saying, I'm a living man, I'm going to be travelling, here's all my details. If you obstruct me, it will be considered to be um, false arrest. But, but when you're in other countries and they ask to see your passport and what country they have. Show them your affidavit. That will mean nothing to you. Because I don't live in Australia. I live on a land known as Terra Australis. The group in Queensland are working on getting these um, cards done, these travel cards done, which will be identification cards for you to do this. But we're waiting to get the First Nations people to understand how important it is that it comes from there. Because no one's going to challenge that the First Nations people don't have the authority on this land. <laughs> is, that why, is that why the state and federal government are trying to do this, you know, with the Aboriginals? Yes, yes, yes. yes. Exactly. Call, call, call this off. Absolutely. Because yeah. they know what's coming and they're trying to trap them. them. But it's not, it's not with the real elders. The, the deal that they're doing is not with the, the uh, traditional owners. It's with the uh, incorporated. The corporation. Yeah. In fact, there's a group in uh, Western Australia where they have convinced the elders there to form a corporate group for all of these tribes. And they're trying to control them through the corporation. That's why I think twice. With the land tax, um, I, I owe, what, 88 grand, I've paid for six years, but I've just sold a property, and 
Sevens, they took 22 grand out and 10 grand worth of rates that I hadn't paid on the Sevens. Have I got any chance to kind of claim that back? Yeah, because it's all fraudulent. Yeah. So all you do is you go to the Registrar General, you say, I want you to pay the rest of this, and then you pull out the fact that the whole contract from the very beginning was fraudulent, so you want every cent you've put back into it, plus the interest that's accumulated and all of this, and you throw it back onto them as fraud. I know people who've done this with their house, and the bank couldn't settle quick enough. They did not want it to get out or go to court for the fraud to be exposed. So they want to settle. Yep. Hang on, we'll look at what's the other bit. Two guys at the back. Yeah, um, before I get on to this affidavit, I've got a, like, an infringement notice in 2021 for the rest of the process. Can I bring that affidavit and serve that on the court? Yeah, that's it beforehand. That's it beforehand. Because you, you haven't committed a crime. Right. The, they have to prove that you committed a crime. Like if I went and said, yeah, I was standing there, but I wasn't protesting. I was just observing what was going on. I wasn't actually near the protest. You know, they just asked my name and said, I'm not giving it to you. Well, there you go. You're not obliged to. Because you a name for a student, that right? You, you're not obliged. No, no law is obliges a living man or woman to divulge their name unless they've been accused of a crime and then it can only happen back at a police station. It can't happen on the side of the road. Now, a good one for all of you to know, if you get stopped by the police, you ask them for their name, their rank and their place of duty in writing. Straight away. Will they do it though? Yeah. If they don't, they commit a crime. Section 456AA of the Crimes Act. No, name, rank and place of duty. Designated place of duty in their workplace. In writing now. 456 AA of the Crimes Act. I think it's section 4. I just said that affidavit directly to the court where I'm going to go to Yeah, you'll see when you do the affidavit, it gives you instructions as to who to send it to. You're going to send it to the head of the court system. Attorney General, the Commissioner of Police, all of these people, and it's the notice of principal, it's notice to agent. The name range plays all duty. What about when you get people to go to do a breathing test with a breathalyzer? Good question. Okay. So let's say I've been pulled over. The first thing I say is, what's the emergency and how can I help you? There is no emergency, we want you to blow into the bag. You say, why? Oh, it's, it's a breath test. <sighs> Yeah, I'm breathing, I'm fine. <laughs> That's going to go down well in the red. And then they'll say, no, you, you have to blow into this bag. Say, I'm happy to do that if you pay my performance fee. Conditional acceptance. But what's your performance fee? $250,000 and I'll blow into your bag for you. And they go, yeah, oh, yeah, fine enough. And they've contracted. So you've got their name. You send them an invoice for $250,000. Binding. <laughs> and then binding. You, you have to enforce them in court, right? To get, get the money, right? No. Nope. So how do you get the money out of them? You, you send an invoice. Yeah. You get a reminder notice. Then you send a notice of pending action because they're in default. Then you file a commercial lien on them. And all the time it's accruing interest. Once it's in a commercial lien stage, the only way it can be lifted is in front of a jury of 12 people. And they've already had a chance to do that, so that's not going to come through. Or what pay you? A commercial lien is against them as the fictional person or the living person? Against the living man. So anything that they do, there's a lien against. Absolutely. Isn't that beautiful? <laughs> so, so all I have to say is okay, where you say... Yep. They, and if they don't say okay? You just keep insisting. No, I'm happy to blow so it your bag. So when does it become a contract? <laughs> the minute they agree. <laughs> Yeah, so because you're offering, agree. they're saying go into my bag, yeah. and you say, I'm happy to do that on yeah. the condition you pay my performance fee. Yeah. And if they say, look, just blow into the bag or we'll arrest you, you say, no, I'm happy to blow into your bag. Yeah. I just need you to agree with the performance fee. If they don't agree, then don't blow into the bag. And what are they arresting you? He refused to blow into the bag? No, I didn't. It's on record. Conditional acceptance. I didn't refuse at all. It's false arrest. And under my thing, that's $10,000. Everything they're accountable for, everything they do once you've got the affidavit in place. With the um, getting their name, name Rachel in place of duty, then now a lot of them aren't wearing 
um, which is an indigenous from the arid deserts that have actually come out, called Global United Natives, mm -hmm. which is sovereign, law, L-O-R-E. Yep. So they're going through the motions of putting all the bits and pieces what you've just said. Um, and they also need to be assisted a little bit. Yeah, more and I'm, look, I'm that. happy to yeah. help any First Nations people who want to get inside my head to make this process easier. Because Rather than don't fight it in their yeah. system. Don't yeah. fight it in their system. Stay outside yeah. and throw your paper bombs in and let them fight amongst themselves. Because there's, there are a few of us, like what I call in the middle of the storm, it's safer there yep. to manoeuvre. And Keith, which is Tesla Technologies, and Carol has the legislation against her not being able to speak for over 25 years. Yeah, no, we, we can... We can deal with that. And just in terms of like the taking the vaccines, I've got Jules here who I've acted as an attorney in fact for. Now, I'm not a lawyer and I don't profess to be a lawyer, but attorney in fact is somebody who's given the power of attorney to act on behalf of someone in certain defined areas. Okay? So when she was sacked, she sent this document to her employers and they had to go through me. And every time they tried to contact her, it cost them $50,000 for breach of legal liability. <laughs> and the very first meeting we had, one particular lady who'd been told all this, she said, oh, yes, I've read that. I don't agree with it. And she kept trying to talk to Jules. So six times she breached the, the, um, the legal liability order, and the next day she got an invoice for $300,000, <laughs> which she still has to pay. And we're, we're waiting on a ruling from Jules' case with the Fair Work Commission, where we're pretty confident that we're going to win, and we've backed her employer into having to pay $7.25 million. Because we've given all of these choices to them, and they ignored all the choices, therefore the default kicked in. Under tacit acquiescence, the default kicked in, to the point where they, if they didn't prove their case, they were in big trouble. <coughs> Yes, it will be a precedent. Absolutely. And we are developing the court case methodology for people who've missed Fair Work Commission so that they can take the matter straight to court under this system and we know it'll work. Well, that work, people are not even been five, but were stood down. Yep. Anyone who's been disadvantaged under the law of the land, anyone who's been hurt or had loss. So if you've lost, you can make a claim. It's, it's really getting to a point to understand just how powerful you are when you stand in your sole entity, sovereign, sovereign, queen state. You are an independent country negotiating with a bully country. How do you follow this? Jules' case, as soon as we get it, we'll be letting everybody know what's happening. Sorry, where do we find you? I got, I'm here through a link that went from a link to our link to a link. So I don't even know, with all due respect, who you are or where you come from. <laughs> <laughs> you do you know what? It, I really appreciate that because it doesn't matter who I am. But That's what I say. But we need to know where to find I, I, I do a Zoom call every Thursday night with the People's Court of Terra Stratus, who are based up in Harvey Bay. Um, the Zoom calls on Thursday night are specifically to answer your questions and point you in the directions of documents, etc. You need to sign up on Lisa's um, mailing list if you're not already. Give me a voice. As a sovereign individual, not an individual. Individual is a fiction. Okay, as a, as a sovereign, you are a sovereign uh, one that's uh, applied to the affidavit and you are you're, you're, you know, If you are accused, pulled up and accused by a constable of, uh, of a crime, accused of it, how far can those powers be taken by him as a constable applied to you? You ask him for reasonable grounds. If he's accusing you of a crime, where's your reasonable ground? And he has to, he has to better verbally give you what his reasonable ground is that you've committed a crime. So if he's been suspicious, he says, we have a witness, a place, Yep. 
then you are obliged to provide, as it said, the system. You don't have to do anything until you get back to the police station. So you have to go back to the police station? Yeah. Can you of course you can. I've done it numerous times, just out of fun. In fact, I, I went, I made an appointment once to see the police, and I walked in, and they set up the whole interview, and they said, so, uh, interview dated such and such, uh, just verifying that you're such and such, and I mean, I didn't say anything. They weren't very happy. <laughs> So always, always right to remain silent. In fact, sometimes I've said to him, now is one of my rights to remain silent? He'll say, yes. Thank you. Yeah. You've been, been asking any questions, don't you? Absolutely. You never yeah. answer any questions. Yeah, that's right. Always follow you with silent. a question. You ask the question. Yeah. Um, can I see your licence? Why do you want to? Yeah. What's a licence? Copy all the time. Yeah. Throw it back with a question. What do you mean by a licence? <laughs> Isn't a license only required for somebody who's carrying on business? You can ask any number of ones. You know, I used to have sheets that I used to give out to people. And I'd say, do go to the next part until they've answered the question there. Just keep repeating it ad nauseum. And just, or, or, when in doubt, I don't understand. I don't understand. Just say it over and over and over again. I'll drive a man. And if, you know in the magistrate's court, they're not supposed to proceed if the accused doesn't understand. Think of it in their terminology. If you don't understand, it means you don't stand out of their authority, like which means they can't go ahead. Because you're, you're asking something that has King, or you're asking it has King to stand underneath them. I don't understand. You can send it before you even get there. Actually, it's that's, that's, that's a different technique, which I've seen just recently in a video. A years ago, it was 30 years old now, with Paul Gates. It's a famous case where Microsoft was considered to be yeah. monopolising and he just kept saying, Unless you write it this way. Okay. What does that say, Alex? It says John Robert in single quote marks. Then most importantly, a comma which separates you from of the family in double quotes Smith. Can I take a photo with that? Yeah. What's the difference between double quotes? <laughs> well, quite simply, if I take that out, what am I saying my name is? Yep, yeah, if I put the comma in, my name is John Robert, I just happen to be of the family Smith. Remember in the old days, it used to be blacksmith, goldsmith. So he was John, who belonged to the blacksmith. And Fred Johnson. Fred was the son of John. Okay. And the fact that I've got the surname quoted means I'm not acknowledging it. When you do a document, the left-hand side is the side of the debitor. So you put all of their details on the left-hand side, under here, under your flag, and your details go on the right-hand side of the page as the creditor. And your ink 
will be purple. Purple? Well, you're a king or queen, aren't you? Okay, my, my autograph is my soul name in purple, my living man name given to me by my mother in red through it with a date, and then I put two of my stamps on it. One is my proper stamp, the other one is my stamp as a notary, and then I put my thumbprint through it. All right, last question. So signing document like that, what does that mean exactly? It means that you're a living man and you're not going to be bullshitted by the fiction printer. So you're still tied as they're told that No, 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 no. You're contracting them as a living man. And see, they can't contract you because they're a fiction. At the end of the day... A corporation can only contract with another, another fiction. Corporation. That's why you, you as a living man take action against the living woman. So if I'm, if I'm writing a letter to whoever it was at Finds Victoria or whatever, to the living man known as, and then I quote his name, acting as such and such officer for. All of my correspondence is from living man to living man. Alrighty, I'm going to have to finish it up there. I want to thank you all so much for listening and for your time.